Gerhard, hello. Hi, hi Kerry. Um, yeah, I've got a few points I want to raise. Um, my, my name is Gerhard Sunborn, and I'm an epidemiologist with the University of Auckland. Um, and also I'm um, part of the COVID Plan B group. And um, I've been listening to your discussions oh, for the past few days in particular, but also over the last few weeks. Yeah. And I've just got a few points I'd like to kind of raise that I think are totally relevant. Um, and the first one is about how deadly the virus is. And so the CDC in, in the US has um, said that it's, the, the virus is between 0.02 and 0.86 um, has a case fatality rate of that, which is actually comparable to influenza, which is 0.1 and 0.5. So it's, it's not that deadly. However, where the, the, um, the concern lies is that in those over 70 or over 65, that's really where um, it becomes mm. more more concerning for elderly people. So, you know, the, the point about um, locking down the whole of Auckland or the whole of the country, um, whether that's a good idea or whether it's better to wrap care around our elderly um, care facilities and hospitals, we think that that is one of the key things that we've advocated for a while. The second thing is around, um, around lockdowns. And so, you know, recently the WHO have come out and said that we need to learn to live with this virus. And also, too, they've come out in a, well, from the, uh, with the experts saying that um, lockdowns don't work. And so and we've seen evidence in the U.S. There's a number of states that have locked down and other states have not. And there's been no real difference in, in the number of fertilities. And mm. the key component is actually population density and the dem- yeah. demographics and the age of, those, of, of the people within those um, communities and states. And, you know, people raise, oh, what about Sweden? They didn't lock down and look at them. But actually, if you look at Sweden compared to other places that did lock down, like the UK, they, they fare better than some of the places that have locked down. So that adds to the point that it's not the locking down. It's around population density and, and, um, and things like that. And so then that leads us on to the point about elimination. Now, there's been interesting new um, definitions of what, elimination means in terms of epidemiology um, over the course of this pandemic. Um, the WHO, they have a set of criteria that determines whether a country has eliminated a disease or a virus or not. And in particular, one for measles, the criteria is that you need to have it eliminated for 36 months. So, you know, although we went for 100 days, which is about three months, um, we still have about 33 months to go mm. before we would have... Um, come close to elimination, and that's with the good surveillance, meaning good testing and things like that. Now, we, we were, a while ago, there was a report saying we wanted 5,500 tests per day, and one particular day we had eight. So it shows our testing and our surveillance isn't too good. Mm. And then once we've achieved 36 months of no cases, there needs to be genotyping evidence so that any new case comes, we can compare their genotyping to the, the virus we've got to make sure it is different and it's not the same. So we're far, far away at, from the possibility of elimination. We haven't achieved it. It takes 36 months before we can actually um, be considered about achieving under WHO criteria. The last point I want to make is around a vaccine. Um, so we have um, good, there's good evidence um, that for a vaccine to um, be developed, in the best case scenario, the fastest time it's taken for a vaccine to be developed is four years, with the average up to 10 years. Now, and there's many cases where viruses, we have never been able to develop a vaccine for, for, and for mm-hmm. instance, HIV. So, mm-hmm. you know, if we're going, if we're going to um, lock down and keep our borders closed and they're hoping in the wait for a vaccine for, in the best case, four years, in the worst case, never, um, I just can't see the logic in that. And so I think, you know, we initially, and, and um, our Prime Minister initially said, um, we've got to flatten the curve and and we don't want our hospital system to get overwhelmed. I think we need to go yeah. back to that. We need to protect our elderly care facilities and and um, our hospitals. And and we've got to get away from this, this um, f- fantasy of elimination because it's driving everything. And also I think Ex- we yep. need to clearly accept how how dangerous this disease, this virus is, and it's it's not as dangerous as the fear that's been instilled um, into our community. Absolutely. 
Gerhard Sunburn, an epidemiologist at Auckland University, not just somebody with a few reckons.